What happened to Visteria? It feels like just the other day the game had over 3,000 active players, but as of recently, it's been in the low hundreds. But why? What caused the game to fall off so hard to where there's nobody playing it anymore? We're going to talk about that in this video, but first, let me get you started in some backstory on the game. On July 12th, 2018, Visteria was created. However, not being playable just yet, the game started getting some heavy development. Things like enemies were being modeled, teleporting to other locations were being integrated, and combat mechanics were slowly being worked on. You gotta keep in mind that this game took a very long time to make and is almost six years in the making for it to be from 2018. But anyways, fast forwarding through a couple minor updates to make the game playable, the game's first pre-alpha place test was on September 1st, 2018. The game wasn't much, however you could fight monsters a little bit, use abilities, and even purchase stuff from shops. Now there was a lot of playtests in this game before they actually decided to get it out of the pre-alpha stage. Some of the dates of the pre-alpha stages were on on September 22nd, 2018, September 29th, 2018, October 6th, 2018, and October 13th, 2018. All of these updates included getting things ready like classes and more enemies, more beautiful graphics to get this thing ready to sell when alpha releases. On November 3rd, 2018, the alpha release of the game was available to play for anyone, and this is when the game shot up in popularity a lot. It was known as the most expensive game on Roblox with it being 800 Robux, and I very clearly remember being all like, what? Who is even going to spend that much money on a Roblox game? even though it was only $10. So I didn't really pay that much attention to this game, and at the time, I did not buy the alpha version. And about a year later, on May 25th, came the release of the beta version of Visteria, which is when I decided to purchase the game. I think it was around 80 or 25 Robux at the time, so I went ahead and bought the game and instantly fell in love with its beautiful graphics, the unique storyline, and leveling up was honestly just so fun and engaging. Like, getting XP was like the best thing to do in that game. And I swear there's something about just not knowing any anything about a game and playing it wrong it's just so much fun and like rewarding i don't know what it is but like the first time you play a game it's just like always the best but anyways the game had some serious updates over time from being in the alpha phase and when the beta phase was released the game was honestly pretty much done there was so much to do and it was always a fun race to try to go ahead and max out your character to the level cap and get like all the best armor at the time like i remember getting the icicle and the fur yeti boots and you were like the coolest guy ever and if you died that icicle like purple or something bro you were so cool and honestly the hourly bosses were like so sick the uh 30 minute bosses and the hour bosses like the yeti and stuff was just so cool and it was also so cool to see this beautiful and like large community all just come together to fight this boss at once and it was like it would lag like crazy it would be so cool and it was like really when i felt the most joy out of playing this game was interacting with everybody else but there was a lot of people playing at this time like i kind of say this is like the peak of the game like maybe like two or three thousand no maybe like four thousand players at this time the servers were always popping and there was always something to do so like you get with your friends and like all right let's go kill this boss or you're like oh, i gotta go farm these quests there was always something to do at this time now throughout me playing this game and having a blast updates were coming like very quickly and it felt like almost every week there was something new to do and something new to learn and then on october 3rd 2019 came a little thing called visteria free weekend which meant anybody could play the game for free on the weekend this brought a lot of new people to play the game and the player numbers were only getting higher and higher this was honestly such good marketing from the Viseria team because after having so much fun playing on the weekend it would lead players to buy the game which only led to grow the game bigger and bigger. After this subclasses were added, the Forsaken Isle became the best spot for leveling and farming money and the game rose to an all time high in popularity at this time. I remember there was like a hundred players or something on the island killing the boss and it was just so fun but it made the game lag so bad. After the Forsaken Isle got released the Whispering Dunes came and it was also very fun playing that version of the game too there was also this thing called like a water bar and you had to stay cooled like hydrated by taking a dip in oasis spots you'd find across the map or else you'd like die so having this item called the portable water became very sought after because you would no longer have to constantly worry about dying to dehydration which made the island a lot less difficult to traverse with this portable water at this time the player base was pretty stable and there was still a lot of people playing the game but little did the players know soon would come Vistir 
Hysteria's downfall. The game experienced a month-long shutdown to rework the game and fix bugs. I honestly don't know why the Visteria team did this. There wasn't much information on this at the time. It was just said that the game and maps needed to be redone, and so caused a one-month shutdown. After the shutdown month was over, the game came back and was much different, with the starting Mushtap map being completely changed. It was really odd to see this because everybody had been playing this for so long on the old maps, and honestly, I kind of missed the old maps because it was a lot more cool trying to figure out what was going on in Explore rather than everything being put right in front of your face. It was pretty obvious the developers were going to try to release the game soon and were making these updates to accommodate for new players. This is where the game was in a very neutral state. There was a decent amount of people playing the game, but there was just something about the game that didn't feel the same. It didn't feel uppity and joyful like when we first played the game. During this time, the game received a lot more updates that completely changed the game, and all of the classes were redone, all of the maps were a little bit different and weird, and were constantly getting changed, so whenever you logged in, you didn't really know where to go. It was cool, but you could really sense that just the hype wasn't there. Throughout these updates, it was pretty good. The game was still neutral, but there was still some cool stuff being added like the pit, and you know, the Gorog fish we're not gonna talk about. But anyways, fast forwarding to the start of the new year, January 1st, 2021, the game was officially being released for free, which was awesome because the game brought in a lot of new players, but it still didn't really feel the same. However, this game rose out of its neutral phase a little bit, and the game was pretty cool. Now, the game being released, you know, there wasn't a lot of major things being updated, just like little bug fixes and UI fixes, so when you rejoin the game in a month later, you were weirded out by how all the UIs are different and things are a lot of stranger now. The game was still alright, however with the lack of big updates coming in, the game slowly started to spiral downhill. For months and months, nothing really major done with the game, causing it to just keep on going downhill while slowly losing players. This is where there started to be a lot more microtransactions, like pets and cosmetics, and it was pretty obvious that they just wanted to squeeze more money out of free players. Then a while later, on August 8th, 2021, they mess with the world some more, completely remaking Mushtown, Mushroom Forest, and the Great Crossroads. Now at this time, there was literally microtransactions in the Mushtown and the Mushroom Forest, which further proves my point of Hysteria just trying to milk these new players for their money. At this point, the game kept on and kept on just going downhill. Everything started to get too repetitive, and it was just, eh, alright. And then they went ahead and added the rebirthing on September 3rd, 2021. One, and yeah, that was pretty cool. So now there's kind of a reason to keep playing the game, even when you completed everything. After that, there was just some more small updates. Nothing really at all, just some more UI changes to make you confused again. Then they added the Halloween update, which was pretty fun actually. There's actually another Halloween update going on right now, which you can play, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, some people hopped on for the Halloween event to fight the new Halloween boss, but that didn't last for very long. After the Halloween event, there was the Christmas event, which was also pretty cool but I didn't really play too much that time because I was kind of over the game for then and there wasn't really a lot of people playing. Now we are kind of reaching the point where Visteria really fell off hard and died because in late 2022, Visteria released a fame update which was kind of like you could say, hey, I don't like you, so I'm going to ruin your reputation and your career. Or you could be like, hey, I like you, uh, I'll give you a like. And that was the point when I really kind of just had enough of the game because the game was nowhere what it used to be. It was just pretty lame seeing these devs update the game with pretty useless updates so i took a long break from this game and hardly play it ever since and so has thousands and thousands of players it was very cool to see this game blossom like a beautiful flower but it really felt like the game was extremely short-lived due to just bad development choices the game just slowly lost their devs and just started to fall off you know you got to keep adding things if you want to keep your players intact and like i was saying a good handful of the devs just kind of straight up left the scene of Visteria for a long time, and now Visteria lies in our hands for the small community that still plays the game. I love this game and forever will, but the game just needs to bring back that classic feel, and we need to start letting our developers know this, and they need to start listening. The game is how it was before, in a very neutral state. The community has very much thinned out, but I believe this game can very much be revived. With the small community we have, we can definitely make an impact. If I could give any advice on this game, it would be to remove 
remove some of the stuff and make it simpler. And I know what you guys are thinking, oh no, that's just going to make the game worse, why would we do that? But if you guys have played the game when it was in beta or when it was in alpha, it was simple and it was great. I would honestly be happy playing this game if all the developers did just made new areas to go to and just increase the level cap like every month. Like, that would really make me happy, and I'm sure it would make a lot of other people too. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I would really like for you guys to leave a comment of where do you think Visteria is going to go next, and what we could do together to make the game better. I would also greatly appreciate it if you guys could rate the video and subscribe. My goal is to hit 500 subscribers before the next year.